Meet Norman. Norman is a broken Robo Sapien with no input device that I picked up on eBay for £5. Why would I buy a broken, dated toy, you may ask? More so, why would I buy one with a missing critical piece? Well, maybe you have a spare remote, I hear you cry. Nope, no remote. Never owned a Robo Sapien before, never really wanted to. No idea what's inside, no idea what version this is. Don't know enough to tell them apart without Googling. But I do know one thing. I know that a man called Carl Monk, at Fortoffee on Twitter, put a Raspberry Pi inside one once, and that's all the reason I need it. So, with one idea planted and one robot arrived, let's see how big a mistake this turned out to be, eh? Disassemble number five, or number two, or number one. Wait, what What type of Robo Sapien was this? Now, I knew there were different models and sizes and even version numbers, but I was lost already. I knew the Robo Sapien was designed to be hacked and modded, and I knew there was a lot of resources out there on the internet, or there used to be. Links that were five or more years old often didn't work anymore, and those that were, well, left something to be desired in the web design stakes. Thankfully, Carl's own website at fortoffee.org.uk suffered none of these problems. Here, Carl had done an amazing job of documenting his own hacking with the Robo Sapien back in 2016. And since this was the man that started it all, unbeknownst to him, I decided to let him be my guide. The site's work is both clear and informative, as well as just about as tongue-in-cheek of my own personal tastes. And, more importantly, he gets down and dirty with the juicy details when it matters the most. I cracked out my crusty cross-point screwdriver and cracked on with cracking Norman's screws open. As you can see, disassembly was simple and very quick. And very quickly, I was sure I had a Robo Sapien Mark I. And I was totally sure I had a really annoying kitten. We resume with the electronics, looking for more potential damage and possible issues before we could start the upgrades. Thankfully, most seemed intact, and therefore, outside of wrapping tinfoil around the battery contacts in the feet where they'd gotten damage from leaking batteries, we were probably good to go. Hitting the switch, I powered it up, and via some unorthodox soldering iron management, we were soon on our way to connectivity. I'd copied the circuit diagram from the 4 Toffee GitHub repo, and after many, many repeated attempts to get it working, got nowhere. The grunts I was getting sounded exactly like the grunts in the description I'd read about online for how the version 1 Robo Norman should sound. So it was even more sure of my versioning, but the software was going nowhere. It was around this time that S decided that I needed to change the tactics and took me to buy beer. And while crossing the road on the way to the beer shop, I was suddenly hit by a stray thought. I bet I forgot to connect common ground. Because at this point, for debugging purposes, I had the Raspberry Pi Zero on a standard mains brick and Norman on his four D-type big torch battery cells. No common ground, no common communications, he wasn't seeing the responses, the pulses, the IR ticks. <gasps> Up until this point, I had gone through several Raspberry Pis and Arduino, swapped my pins around, changed my code, gone back to data sheets to assure the pins were what I had expected, and nothing had worked. But the application of beer, common sense, and common ground, and soon things started to change. I had to undo a bunch of undoing that I'd already done moving pins back and forth from the Raspberry Pis, but eventually we got a working Norman, and of course, the inevitable broken Pi. Norman worked, Carl's code worked, Carl's logic worked, Carl's git commits worked, they were all perfect. Even Norman, outside of his poorly old feet, was perfect too. So really, the only faulty part here was me. So, I'd done it. I'd taken a broken children's toy, and added a Raspberry Pi Zero, and then given it a web-based remote control. You can see the prototype of it working right here. The code is very simple, and most definitely not best practice, but it proves the point. And more importantly, it would probably work for any droid that can use Carl's Robo.py. The IR codes are just sent over the Wi-Fi, so what we've built here is effectively a mini Wi-Fi to infrared bridge, I guess. In the next episode, I'll think I'll look at adding some more sophisticated controls, with macros maybe, and fixing up that hardware so it's not quite literally held together with Beth wishes and a string. 
Although I think we'll probably keep the hot glue. It keeps the power switch together for the moment anyway. I think there's also mains power also on the table here for Wee Norman. Because the batteries don't seem to be powerful enough to do the wireless and the motors and the pie all at once. He certainly seems to be getting a little bit weak of limbs towards the end there. I hope you'll join me next time with Norman and for other things here on At Zalia. I've been D, aka Zalio, and remember to like, follow, subscribe and share for more stuff like this. And please, if you have something to say about this video or something you'd like to see in my next video, leave a comment below. Bye for now.